So what you see here is a lawn to garden conversion. This was done uh, about five months ago. It was all grass and we came in and sheet mulched with heavy cardboard and wood chips from a tree company in town. And then we took all the branches and biomass from this ash tree that had been cut and placed them on site, have covered them with compost, uh, now bringing leaves in and we'll be bringing in manure and other materials before winter sets in to start to build up the soil on the site and create these really rich garden beds. Um, so if you just tried to plant stuff here on your lawn, you wouldn't, wouldn't have had anything to no, we wouldn't have answer had anything. for. We would have had to contend with the grass. And if you look, aside from the spot where it's grown up there, there's the cardboard. The cardboard is pretty much breaking up. The grass is gone. So now we could actually plant into this if we wanted to. Also, you see all in the wood chips, all the mycelium. Beautiful. So, and the beauty with this is similar to the forest garden project we started on the other side of the lawn last year, is it's right in the front yard. Um, it's a highly traveled road. We have a lot of neighbors out and about, and so it gets them to understand, you know, what's possible to build soil and to actually repair their yard and create habitat and something delicious to eat. So, all the many things that we can accomplish. So eventually, maybe people will only be using their lawnmowers just to uh, mulch up their leaves to put on their... Uh... That would be ideal. This spring coming up, what we'll probably do is use all those garden beds for potatoes. And we'll actually use it as an excuse to bring more, more material in and build up the beds higher. After the potatoes come out, then we'll start planting it. We're actually working on a design um, for bees, uh, for medicinal plants, and for more uh, perennial fruit. So things that are low growing that will keep the yard open and beautiful and add a lot of flowers and also provide habitat and food. So if we go down this way now, um, our whole property slips away from the road and we have a tendency to pick up a lot of moisture that's coming down off the road and collecting along the driveway. And so we started by building some small wildlife ponds, which were tremendous in bringing frogs and other things in. And last year, we began experimenting with the concept of growing rice on the site. So we did, on a trial basis, we did one rice paddy here, uh, where we were able to start the rice in the greenhouse and then plant it out here. And it was harvested a couple weeks ago. And we're so excited about the prospects for, of rice that we are looking at growing 10 varieties next year. Um, this was one variety. And we're building two more rice paddies that stagger up the hill for our uh, stormwater storage for habitat for rice cultivation and then a fourth rice paddy down in the lower garden it was a variety that was grown in putney vermont the first year they did a rice trial and they didn't get any rice seed out of it and we barely got rice seed out of it it needs a longer season so we've actually sent away for other varieties that are more cold tolerant ah so okay so you're not getting your chopsticks out and uh yeah, yeah. E eating this no. Now we're still working on cultivating the rice seed that will be growing future years. We have uh, kiwis on this vine. Kiwis. Just got okay. kiwis this year. We had to wait nearly seven years for them. But it was well worth the wait. They were delicious. Kids were excited to bring them to lunch. <laughs> That's cool. Still got some uh, kale. Uh... Still some kale. So you built this greenhouse when? Uh, this greenhouse is going into its third winter and with the whole intention being season extension. We had used cold frames prior to this um, and primarily using it as a hot house in summer for tomatoes and eggplant and peppers and then come September switching it over just to production for greens into the winter. And so we'll have greens in here um, and be eating greens in here into January and then things will trail off and we'll start up again um, late February, early March. So I was out here cutting greens earlier. We still have some Thai peppers and habaneros left to harvest. Ooh. And then this is some rice that I just pulled in as it started to look like winter might come um, to see how it would do in here. Oh, so this, this came out of, the, uh, out of your rice paddy there? Right. It's oh. Koshi Hikari is the variety. Koshi Hikari. So we will do different varieties next year.
and they're delicious. When but did you plant? Uh, this was all planted in September. Um, I think mid September and then late September back here. And I mean, today it's a, it's been cloudy for a few days. It's in the 40s in here now. Um, we get a partly sunny day, and with the door closed, the fan will kick on. We have a heat storage system in the ground, um, and it'll be comfortably 80, 85 in here. So, and then we use double coverage. So when I'm done cutting greens, I'll cover it up to get a little bit more protection from them from colder nights. So do you expect to see this soil uh, becoming a, a real organism, living organism, not just a growing medium? Yeah, it really is. I mean, there are worms and other animals in here. Oh, which is already exciting. after two years. Yeah, yeah and, and yeah. we built it up only with compost. Um, okay. And then it goes down through the sand below and down to the to the natural material. Ah, okay. okay. But because so much of it's been an experiment and just been a really fun adventure, we added a banana tree this year. Oh, that's a banana so, tree. Banana tree. I was so, thinking, what is that? Tobacco or a... <laughs> it's a cold climate banana tree. It supposedly can handle a freeze. It will go dormant um, and then come back. And so we'll see if we're successful. We'll get some small dessert variety bananas, and if not, we mm, have okay. some nice leaves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I don't hear chickens. You must not have them in here now. They're outside. Um, oh. Yeah, they can go right out the back. Oh. Um, they were in there earlier. I could hear one was in their way. Okay. Like, being kind of vocal. So chickens for uh, e eggs, uh, pets, and meat? Correct. And entertainment. <laughs> and entertainment. I don't, I don't eat the eggs, but I like the manure. Huh. So everyone in the family seems to have something that they like about the chickens. And no rooster, because we are in a neighborhood um, that we're one of a number of families that have started raising chickens in town again. And in order to stay in good terms with all of our neighbors, We've made a commitment to not having a rooster. No alarm clocks. No yeah. alarm clocks. Those alarm yeah. clocks go off all day long, too. So, do you find neighbors uh, with greenhouse envy? Oh, absolutely. Um, great neighbors with greenhouse envy. Um, Colby Sawyer College is, we're, I'm working with them and a natural builder by the name of Brian Felice. We're planning a class modeled after the one we teach at Plum Estate called Sustainable Structures. And uh, year one will be to build the natural building to serve as a classroom. And year two, they want to build some version of this, but bigger.